Hello students, I am Mahesh Javalkar from Maratha Mandal Polytechnic and I am posting a video today on applications of electronic engineers in which I am going to speak on what are photocopiers. So here you can see today's topic under the office automation will be photocopiers. Now a contents in this what we are going to study is what is a photocopier? What is xerography, the method by which you can copy a photo? Paths of photocopier. How does a photocopier work? And features of photocopier. So if you see the a definition of photocopier, a photocopier also known as a, a copier or copy machine is a machine that makes paper copies of documents and other visual images quickly and cheaply. Most uh, current photocopiers use a technology called xerography. Copiers can also use other technologies such as inkjet, but xerography is a standard for office copy. Now in this uh, xerography, okay, most modern photocopiers rely on this technology called as xerography, which is essentially a dry photocopying technique. It involves using electrically charged particles to attract and then deposit it toner particles onto a piece of paper to form the image. Now this is one photocopier shown. You can have many types of photocopiers depending upon the company which is make. So there are many types. This is one of the types shown. Now the main parts of photocopier. If you see the important parts of a photocopier, they are number one, photoreceptor drum or belt okay so the drum will be with the belt second will be the toner third will be the corona wi wires fourth will be lamp and lenses and fifth will be fuser now what is that drum it is called as photoreceptor drum it is going to receive light on the drum and then what happens what magic happens on the drum so photoreceptor drum or belt which is covered by a layer of semiconductor material such as selenium okay so it is covered by a layer of selenium selenium coating is there this is the most critical or important part of the machine selenium's conductivity changes when it is exposed to light and it is this property that allows it to transfer images so this is important the conductivity of the selenium changes when light falls on it okay so this is what is going to make you to frame the image. In the dark, the photoconductor layer on the drum acts as an insulator, resisting the flow of electrons from one atom to another. But when the layer is hit by light, the energy of the photons liberates electrons and allows current to pass through. This newly freed electrons are what neutralizes the positive charge coating the drum to form the latent image. Now all this procedure, how it is running, we will see when we see the diagram of the working of the photocopier. Then second unit will be the toner. A, a toner which is basically just pigmented liquid, sometimes referred to as dry ink. A, a toner is a dry mixture fine of fine negatively charged particles, negatively charged plastic particles and coloring agents that create the duplicate image on a piece of paper. Then here you can see we have shown some toners here and this toners you can see it is for the color photocopying machine. So you can see various toners here. So for color you require three primary toners and from the three colors you are going to develop all other colors. Okay, So you will be having the toners here which will be having that particular ink. Okay. Then what are corona wires? A corona wires which when subjected to a high voltage transfer a field of positive charge to the surface of the photoreceptor drum and the copy paper. Then what is light source and lenses? A light source and lenses are used for scanning the document. A light source and few lenses which shine a bright beam of light on the original document and focus on the copy of the image onto a specific place 
respectively. Now, uh, here is where you can show how the light inside is going to fall on the document which you keep on the top of this. Then the last and important point will be the fuser. A fuser can be considered as the main final component of a photocopier. As a fuser unit melts and presses the toner image onto the copy paper and imparts the final touches to the du duplicate image just before it's ejected from the machine. Now, if you go to see a general explanation how the process is going to work, so here you can show there is a document on top. So on top you can see a, a document here. So here is your a document. So here you can see your original document. This is your original document. Okay. Now this document matter which is in dark and white that is black and white you can say dark and white or colored and white okay that will be scanned by light from this light so this is your light source okay so this is your so here you can see this is your light source okay now this light source is going to give you a light ray which will be incident on the photocopy okay if the matter on the photocopy is having dark color then this light will get absorbed no light will be reflected but if the matter on the document is white color then light will be reflected back on the drum okay so light is going to come for the places where it is white on the document okay now here this is a drum this is your drum okay drum which will be connected with high corona wires of high voltage so voltage will be higher so corona wires will be given now because of this corona wires and the application of voltage this will be electrically charged so you can show positive charge here down okay and negative charge on top negative charge on top okay now whenever light falls on it whenever light falls on it the electrons will start moving and the light and the negative charge will be compensated by the light so there will be no charge over that the place where light falls and only when the light is not falling because of the dark pictures on the paper at that time the negative charge will remain on the drum okay like that depending upon what you have scanned image here depending upon what light falls here depending on that a uh, image is formed here a uh, electrical shadow is formed that is whenever light falls it is taken as positive there is no charge over there and whenever no light falls it is as it is negative charges will be there okay so so here you will form the electrical shadow of the image now this will go along the belt the shadow will go and it will come here it will come here now this shadow will get in contact with the toner this is the toner this is the toner which is having the ink which is the particles now these particles will attract on the opposite polarities charges of the electrical shadow and they form an image on that. Now that image is given here, that image comes here. Now here you are going to send a paper, here you are going to send a paper. So here you can see there are a set of papers over here. So here you are going to send. So here you can see a set of papers here. So one paper will come here and it will start moving. It will start moving. The paper will be positively charged. Okay, once it comes here, 
this image of electrical will fall on that paper will fall on that paper and once it comes here the fuse the fuse will melt the image and print it on the paper and the paper will come out here with a warm feeling with a warmness and the picture printed on it the picture printed on it this is how output you will get for the paper now this is the process in which your photocopier process is going to work same process you can show in another way so here you can have your document here you are showing your here you are showing your document on this document the light will be scanned light will be incident and wherever there is white light light will be reflected whenever there is black material on the document light will not be reflected whenever there is white material on the document light will be reflected and that light reflected will make a electrical image over here okay so this is your drum this is your drum okay so it will make an electrical image now that electrical image is also called as electrical shadow that when it is passed to the toner then toner is having its particles over here now those particles will recombine with the image depending upon the polarity and then form a image of that with the help of ink and that image when it comes here the paper which is coming from here on that paper that image will fall the image is pressed and then you are having a fuse fuse which will melt and that complete image will be printed on that and the paper becomes warm and then it is coming out here okay with a printed image this is how the process of photocopier is going to work now if you write the theory of how does a photocopier work then in that note you can write to begin the photocopying process the top layer of the photocopier is opened and the master copy is placed face down on the glass surface where a bright light beam will scan the entire document white areas on the paper reflect more light while black areas reflect little or no light an electrical shadow or image of the master copy is formed on the photoconductor that that is the drum okay so this is an important line electrical shadow or image of the main original document is formed on the photoconductor that is the drum as the conveyor belt with the photoconductor coating moves it takes the electrical shadow along with it too okay now we know that the drum is coated with selenium and selenium is a semiconductor so when light falls on it it will behave as a, a conductor and when light does not fall on it it behaves as an insulator okay now that property of a conduction builds the electrical image on the drum which is called as electrical shadow okay so electrical shadow along with it too the negatively charged toner particles stick to the electrical shadow and an ink impression of the master copy is made on the conveyor belt so on the belt also now you are having the master copy of the inked impression of the image then a blank piece of paper is fed into the photocopier from the other side which slowly moves towards the photoconductor belt as it moves on the conveyor belt a strong positive charge is imparted to it also the strong positive charge of the blank paper pulls the negatively charged toner particles towards itself consequently a duplicate image of the master copy is formed on the blank paper finally just before spitting the paper out a fuser unit a pair of hot rollers fuser unit is a pair of hot rollers supply heat and pressure so the toner particles are permanently attached or fused onto the paper this is why a freshly ejected duplicate copy is quite warm to 
to the touch. Then we'll see what are the features to consider for a photocopier. So the important features are the speed of the photocopier, the scanning time, the scanning process, the type of printing, staple and hold punch additional facilities, and follow me printing. These are the important features. So if you see the speed, in speed we can say that when trying to decide on the appropriate speed for your multifunction copier, you should consider volume and number of users printing on the machine. So you should always consider how many papers you want to print and then how many number of users are printing to the machine. Okay, So that is where the speed will come into picture, how fast you are doing the work. Then second feature comes as scanning. So scanning process has been shown in the picture. Then for scanning we can write, a copiers have a variety of options to choose from for scanning. If you scan files with several pages, you might want to consider a copier that has a larger document feeder with faster scanning speed. So it should have a larger document feeder, many papers should come and it should scan faster. Then copier file format, if you are having a PDF format and then you have to convert it to other format. So copier file format will also be there. So in that file format is also something to take into consideration when looking at scanning features. Most copiers today come standard with the ability to scan PDF, TIFF or JPG type of images. Then media type. What is the size of the paper you are going to use on which you are going to have a Xerox copy? So we should take into consideration what type of media we are printing. The most common paper size printed on is the A4 size paper. Most copiers will print up to legal size paper. Another popular size is the A3 size paper. The A4 class of copiers are usually a little expensive. Okay. Uh, sorry, A4 class of copiers are usually little less expensive. They are less expensive than A3 class. Then you will be having staple and hold punch facility where you can put a staple to the bunch of papers or you can press a hole, you can make a hole with the punch machine. So this facility is also there within the photocopier where the document, all the papers can be set and stapled and if you want to put it in a file, you can punch the holes on the paper. So hole punch and staple are some other finishing options that may be important. Most people don't even realize the features exist. Hole punch can be added giving you the ability for a two hole punch or three hole punch. Stapling can be added giving you the ability to corner staple and double staple. Some copiers have staple free stapling which crimps the pages together eliminating the need of staples altogether. Then the next feature is follow me printing. In that, when this feature is implemented, you are sending your print job to a shared print queue. Shared print queue. It is a queue of the shared terminal. So shared print queue instead of a specific copier. Okay. The other features of copier include binding of papers, automatic document feeding, duplex double sided printing or scanning, touch screen display, image editing for adding page numbers or watermarks or resizing, user accounts, wireless, Bluetooth or USB connectivity in addition to standard LAN network. Security features, example, passwords, pins, data encryption, etc. Power saver modes, multimedia support, example, card, different sizes and stocks of papers. Additional paper storage, inbuilt HDD storage for easier document storage and management. These are some other extra features of a photocopier. Thank you students for watching the video.